Hey guys, thanks for tuning in for another episode of Flipping Customized. And today behind me, what we got here on the lift is the, just a quick little recap, is the 91 S10 regular cab short bed square body truck that I started about three years ago. Down to the frame, that wasn't the intent, um, that wasn't the original plan, but the more and more I tore into it, I just kept going. So anyway, the truck is clean, it's painted, Front end is completely rebuilt and I'm finally back on it. So we got it back on the lift today and what we're going to be doing today is building the GM 10 bolt 7.5 inch rear end. And do you ever have one of those guys that you, is your go-to guy that I guess you lean on for advice and mechanical tips? So I have that guy with me today and that guy, his name is Steve. Come on over here, Steve. Oh boy. So this is Steve. Hi guys. I don't know if you're even in the film yet. Come on over some more. Here we go, just in case. <laughs> so this is Steve. He's gonna help us set this rear end up today. And we're about to get going on it. So stay tuned. See how you can go. Alright, just to catch you up to speed, here's all our parts here. In this uh, 10 bolt, I guess you call it seven and a half inch rear end. Um, this S10 came with uh, 26 spline axles and a 342 bearing setup. I mean, uh, gear setup. And what we're doing, and obviously it was an open rear end. We got an Auburn, Auburn Gear Pro Series limited slip we're putting in it. Obviously a complete rebuild kit with bearings and seals. New 28 spline. These are the bigger axles that are going in this truck as well. So, and, and the 373 ring gear set. So this is a complete setup video what we're gonna do today. And basically we're gonna start with just finishing gutting this thing out. Most of it's gone, but we're gonna pull the bearings out of it, pull the seals out of it, make sure everything's clean. Make sure we got our ducks in a row before we tear right into it. So just to give you a quick update is where we're at, where we're at with parts. Um, this is gonna be an LS powered V8. So she's gonna be seeing a decent amount of horsepower. So hopefully we can get a few years out of this thing. Um, but here we go. All right, I just wanted to give a quick, the difference between the uh, new 28 spline axles and the 26 spline axles. And if you look at them here, this is what came out of this, this uh, housing and 26 spline versus 28. There's a significant difference in, in size here in the diameter. This 28 spline is a lot beefier. Um, as far as longevity and holding up, it's got nice transitions to it. And I think it's gonna do everything that we want it to do. And the only thing we gotta do before we throw these in as, as well is uh, put the studs into it. Um, and one more thing to mention that we're gonna do here in a second is double check your ring and pinion gear ratio. Make sure you got what you got. And that's dividing the uh, pinion, I mean the uh, ring gear by the pinion and making sure you get the ratio that you want. And then once we're happy with that, we're gonna go ahead and take that ring gear, we're gonna throw it in our oven our nice little powder coating oven set up hey, for 350 degrees for probably a couple hours, maybe while we're doing some other stuff. So it'll go on our uh, limited slip carrier that much easier. We're not pounding, we're not pressing, we're not doing any of that stuff. It'll just drop right on. All right, so as you saw in one of them that we're using the punch and the hammer, to get some of the bearings and races out. And now we've got our handy dandy uh, piece of EMP electrical pipe that we're gonna be sliding on one end of the axle to drive out the bearing and seal on the other end of the axle because, well, we forgot our slide hammer. So that's what you do, you improvise and get it done. All right, we're getting ready to do the ring gear. So what are we doing, Steve? All right, so now that we got the carrier set up in a comfortable position, we're gonna grab the ring gear out of the oven. It's been heating up at 350 for a couple hours. We're gonna set it over the carrier, and right before we set it on the land where the press fit is, we're gonna get the bolts started to line up, and we're gonna send it home. Beautiful. One thing to mention, the mistake I made earlier taking the other one apart, uh, left-hand thread, people. So 
Remember that when you're putting this together, at least on these GM's left hand thread. So here we go. All right, so we got the ring gear on there and we're letting it, all we did was start a few of the bolts. Um, like I said, when you heat that up in the oven, uh, the ring gear itself, she literally will drop right on. You're not fighting anything. And once those come to temperature, meaning they equalize, then we're gonna go ahead and Loctite and put the uh, all the fasteners in, and I believe it's a 60 pound torque. So we'll get that done too. And what are we doing next? We are working pinion. Yep, next we'll go in and put the races in the pinion, the new races. We can set the pinion in with the original shims and the original crush sleeve just until the end when we verify tooth pattern, pinion depth's all set, then we will put the new crush sleeve in, the seal, and finalize everything. All right, let's do this. All right, so what I'm doing, I actually put it on 4K now, so we'll get good video, Steve. Sweet. All right, so what did we just do with the uh, pinion? All right, so we installed the pinion, no crush sleeve. The inner pinion bearing is the old one with the inner race ground out because there's a shim behind that, between that and the pinion gear that sets your pinion depth, but you don't find that out until after you put the carrier in. So you wanna make sure because you wanna ruin the new bearing. So the pinion set in with the old bearing, inner bearing in, uh, both new races and the new outer pinion bearing set the yoke is on, everything's tight, nothing's torqued. Next step is we're gonna go over to the carrier. We're going to install all the ring gear bolts with Loctite and torque the 60 foot pounds. And then we're going to install that into the axle housing and we're gonna set up for backlash. Beautiful. So there we have it. The pinion is in there temporarily. And the reason why we grind out the inner race and we're using the old one is just because the potential to have to take this in and out, right, is likely. And right. that, so we don't mess up the new bearing. Yes, because you don't find out your pinion depth until after backlash when you check your tooth pattern, your tooth contact. And what changes that is the shims behind your inner bearing. And you don't want to press that on and off a bunch of time, ruining the new bearing. Beautiful, and that's what we're doing now that the uh, this setup here is equalized in temperature, and I can actually touch it now. We're gonna send the uh, new bolts home, reverse thread with the Loctite 60 foot pounds. All right, Steve. All right, so we just um, did some uh, shim miking, and the reason for that was to. Now well, it's your turn. So, to, <laughs> to get in preparation for setting backlash, since we are going with a the brand new carrier and we have old spacers that came out of it. And as of right now, we don't know the preload on the carrier bearings. So what we're trying to do is in prep of putting the new bearings on, then putting shims in, and then putting the carrier inside the housing so we can set backlash. So we're gonna try to use the original spacers to start off with to get us a starting point. But we wanted to mic out what we had for shims and what the new spacers that came with the rebuild kit are, just to compare to see what we have so we don't get too cattywampus at the end. So now we're gonna use the original spacers to start off with. We're gonna press the new bearings onto the carrier and we're gonna set the whole thing into the housing using a case spreader and then we're gonna check backlash. Got it. And uh, something to note, we actually modified our case spreader <laughs> to fit this smaller housing because it's Steve's here and we were able to make it work so that's good and then we mic'd our shims in the factory shims were around 0.230 ish 2232 two, and um that gives us a good baseline like like steve was saying it allows us a good baseline um and you're probably here in the background but as of course we have our tv going to motivate us and it's uh death with car show so a little motivation there all right, guys, and what we got now is we're pressing the bearings on because on this uh, housing setup, the shims are on the outside anyway. So we can go ahead and not have to worry about putting shims behind the bearings. So we're using the press so we get a nice even push um, getting the bearings on. So just so you know, when you see it in a minute going into the, the housing and the bearings are on it, this is how we got them on. This is the best way to do it without damaging the bearings too. 
All right, here's the actual case spreader. Uh, and for all the, those of you who don't know, and when you're trying to set your, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, but your bearing preload and whatnot, um, this opens up the case so you're not driving that carrier in and out, in and out. It'll go in nice and easy because we took the stress off the case by, by separating it out and allow us to, to test fit that carrier and check our um, pinion depth and gear mesh as well, right? As far as that goes, Steve? Yes, correct. When anytime you want to take a carrier out and you have the preload on your carrier bearings, you really don't want to mar things up or mangle things by putting pry bars in there and stuff. By just spreading the case ever so gently, right? You don't want to go too far because you can crack things because it's cast. You will be able to pull the carrier out without munging anything up. So. Beautiful. And we, as you can see, we, we actually modified our uh, case spare a little bit for this little GM 10 bolt. So it works. So the carrier is in and we just took the case spreader off. Um, like I said, we had to put some, some uh, tension on it to allow us to put that in with the factory shims in order to get our initial um, checks on this thing. So uh, Steve's just putting the bearing caps back on. We're gonna torque those up to 60 foot pounds. And next step is, Steve? We're gonna check backlash. So we'll set up the dial indicator and go from there. Excellent, let me get you on a stand here and we'll uh, document that. All right, Steve, we got our uh, dial indicator on there, it looks like, and checking our backlash, where we at? Yes, sir, so right now we, we stabbed in our carrier with the original spacers just to get a baseline. And right now we're at 22 to 23 thousandths backlash, which is way too much. The spec calls from seven to nine. We're shooting for eight because once you put your crush sleeve on and everything's torqued to its final spec, it's gonna move a little bit. So if you shoot for the middle, you'll be within the range. So being 23 thousandths, we have to take a little bit of shim out of this side and put a little bit more shim on this side to bring the ring gear closer to the pinion. Absolutely. So we'll get this apart and we're going to mic out some shims and then do it again. All right. So our case spreader modification um, is starting to yield and we're not able to take the carrier in and out like we need to be doing. So we're going to cut this one off and I've got a bigger diameter bolt that I'm going to cut up and weld on. And I'm going to, we're going to put this back in and hopefully that one don't yield. I mustn't have had this diameter bolt, the one we're gonna use the first time we did this, or I would have gone with a bigger one. Uh, old school stick welding, so we can get some strength into this thing. I don't know if you caught that in the time lapse, me burning my finger because I was rushing and had mechanics gloves on instead of the proper PPE. Right, Steve? Yeah. So baby. if I had the proper PPE, that wouldn't happen, but we're not going to edit it out because this is the real deal. So is what it is. We're moving on. It's all modified and we're going to put this thing back in. We did one side. We're going to see if, because we did the side that yielded as far as the, uh, the bolt that had failed on us. So um, we'll get the new one stick welded on there. We'll put it back together and do this again. All right, after a few in and out, in and out, and we got our case spreader straightened out, uh, looks like we've achieved our backlash. Right, Steve? Yep, so we got, the spec is anywhere from seven to nine, which is a pretty tight spec. Usually, your good general rule of thumb is six to 10. Um, we are somewhere between eight and nine. So we're gonna leave it for now because once you put all your good bearings on your pinion and the crush sleeve it tends to push your pinion into the case a little bit more which will tighten you up and if worst case scenario at the end of the day we have to take it back out to do a final adjustment at the end of the day we want this right so right now we're at the perfect right in the middle eight thousandths we're going to paint some teeth and check our tooth contact all right here we go yeah she's uh, on this thick 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 these teeth painted right up. Well, we have our tooth contact and we are actually happy with what we got here. Um, as you can see, it's kind of hard to see with the camera, but we have a center tooth contact on and you see the paint transfer there. 
not too high, not too low. We're centered up there nicely. Um, and I know if Steve's comfortable with it, Scott's comfortable with it. <laughs> but uh, it looks good. It looks real good. So what we've got to do now is pull this back apart. The carrier is going to come out again no matter what because the if you remember right from the beginning, we used the ground out and used the old bearing on the pinion for testing purposes. So we're going to put the new bearing on the pinion. We're going to put the crush sleeve on. And at that point, we're going to be torquing everything up and then we're going to recheck everything again. All right, so we got the uh, pinion all in final set now with the seal bearing, um, new bearing uh, pressed on there and everything. And then we got the nut run down and basically you run down the main nut on this setup anyways, um, until we end up with a rotational torque of around, anyways, I mean, we've seen from what we've found 20 to 32 or so. So we're running around what, 29, 30, Steve? 30. So it feels good, we're comfortable with that. Um, as far as resistance go. So this part is done. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the carrier back in and recheck everything on that. Oh, update, lunch break. So we went to health food route. We're uh, getting some energy with the health food. Then we're gonna get back on this rear end because uh, it's going well. All right, a little final torquey torquey going on. 60 foot pounds. 60 foot pounds. And then we're gonna be painting the teeth again and checking our backlash again as well, just to re-verify we got everything in there. So we're gonna do that. And then at that point, if everything is good, we're gonna be talking axles. Oh yeah, you ready? There we go. We just did our final backlash and we are at right at 8,000, that's right where we wanna be. So, it pays to have uh, your buddy's expertise come help you out. <laughs> Alrighty, so we got new bearings in and now we're going ahead and putting the seals in. The right thing to do. Something funny to mention about the uh, axle clips, the C clips, is I uh, couldn't find them, and they fell off my bench or uh, my rack, and I found them underneath the rack on the floor in the dirt. So uh, that almost got pretty scary. All right, so we're down to our axles now, our new 28 spline. Richmond axles and what we're doing is we're gonna be pressing the studs in there's a numerous ways you can do it And how the way we chose to do it is with a ball joint press. So we just kind of set it on there And suck it through turning this with an impact gun that way we're not gonna hammer on it We're not bending the flange and none of that stuff. So we're gonna get the studs put in so we can uh, pop these axles in All right, what we're doing here, I don't know if we can get in here and see this, but inside the diff, he, uh, Steve, these are C-clip, held in C-clip axles, and Steve's pushing the axle in here. I'm trying to be steady, 
as you can see it there, he's got it in all the way and there's a groove. Find it, there it is. And this clip's going in that groove. So I'm gonna get my fat little fingers in here. I'm gonna put this in the groove. And I hold it in the groove, if you can see that. Then he pulls the axle back towards him and that clip can no longer come out. So you're like, oh, well, why the hell's, how's that stay together? And that's the pin, where'd the pin go? The pin that goes in the carrier itself. Let me rotate this, right there. So that pin drops down through the carrier itself and then that gets held in by another pin this way. Keeps these axles locked in. So as simple as that is putting the uh, C-clip axles into this thing. And there it is, brand new seals, everything. There it is, completely assembled, double checked, axles in, clips in, preload set, backlash checked. This thing is <laughs> race ready, Steve. Race ready, LS fast, here we come, maybe, maybe not. I mean, there's, there's definitely a ways to go, kind of. But there it is, buddy. Roller. So I'm gonna cap this off. And uh, get her filled up. Oops. Oh, I'm filming. All right. There it is, guys. So I hope you liked the video. Today we did the complete limited slip, new axles, uh, ring, pinion, 373 gearing in this 91 S10 square body now. And that was a start to finish video. Uh, I had my good friend Steve. Come on over here, Steve. So it helps to have a good buddy with the expertise that this is this is his thing he's good with this stuff he's good with engines so he's my go-to guy with that stuff um i don't do it every day i'm not afraid to admit that so it's okay to have good friends come over and help me out and like, what a great great thing so we had a great saturday we got this done if you like this video you want to see some more please subscribe leave a comment below we'll do our best to respond we want to get steve over here some more because uh we're doing the Rear disc brake conversion next, so watch for that in the coming videos, and then we're on to the LS engine build. Thank you. Thanks, guys.